I just realized that most of you like real-time colored pencil drawing video compared to speed drawings or the time-lapse videos that I do. So that's what I, I am giving you. And on this particular video, you will not only learn how to draw, layer, blend, realistic skin tone with colored pencils, but you will also learn about all these tools. So these are the tools that I use to create realistic skin tone with colored pencils. So I hope you watch this long video. This is going to be long, but I know that you will learn something from it. So watch and enjoy. On this real-time colored pencil drawing video, I am using Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is an oil-based colored pencil. Uh, Prismacolor is wax-based. This pencil is oil-based. So uh, there are a bit difference in terms of the blending between oil-based and wax-based. But uh, this uh, real-time video, you will see how I layer and blend oil-based colored pencils. So it doesn't matter if you use uh, other brands as long as they are oil-based. So you can apply this particular drawing technique that I'm going to show you using all those tools. So you will know. About I always start drawing the details on the skin particularly the very much visible skin pores and tiny what do you call these tiny spots on the skin tiny freckles so i'm using this dark brown pencil this is the dark umber you can use any other dark browns and um, yeah that's what i do first this is like blocking in the shadows but because the skin tone is highly detailed with all these uh tiny uh pores and freckles so i draw them i i uh I really have to be patient in doing this because I want to create um, realistic skin tone. So this this technique that I use is going to be a dry technique but uh, it's more detailed because I'm using oil-based colored pencils such as this one, the polychromos. So I'm not putting all these details randomly, I always base uh, on my reference photo. So uh, there are bigger freckles. So this is a combination, this, this uh, layering technique is a combination of uh, tiny dots or pointillism and stippling or the tiny circles So it really depends on the area of the skin tone There are some parts of the nose which is a bit smoother compared to other parts Which the details of the skin tone is very much visible. So uh, Just be patient in drawing all these details Again, this is the dark umber. So I usually go from dark to light. So this is uh, the darkest pencil that I use on the skin tone, but um, I can see that I need to use black, especially on the nostril. So be careful in using black. You don't want to use them very much on the actual skin tone. So maybe I'll be, I'll be using black. So where's my black? I'm here. So uh, I need to sharpen it a little bit. Okay, so I think I need to use it on the nostril. The other nostril is a bit hidden. So only on this particular nostril. So I don't want to push hard on my pencil because this is polychromos, this is highly pigmented so you don't need to really push hard and compared to Prismacolor, I think they are better in terms of going inside the tooth of the paper. By the way, the paper that I use here is the Strathmore colored pencil paper. So Strathmore has Bristol papers but they also have a paper specifically for colored pencil so this is the colored pencil paper of the Strathmore. I like it because it has a very nice tooth or texture. This is medium surface. Um, this is 160 GSM. This is a little bit thinner uh, compared to the Bristol but uh, thick enough to handle uh, realistic uh, skin tone drawings using this one, the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Using tiny circular motion, I want to black in very gently some of the darker shadows so that we will uh, be able to show the shape of the nose. So by doing this very lightly, very lightly we will not lose the details that we put in because uh, uh, I'm doing it using very very light pressure only on the very shadowed areas like here and here I can see some tiny pores even on this highlight this uh, long highlight the watery highlight in the middle of the nose uh, I can see some uh, dark skin pores inside the highlight so I just draw them using pointillism uh, technique layering technique but even if I put uh, all these details on this highlight in the middle of the nose you can still see it's still very visible the highlighted part so I'm still on my first uh, pencil the first layer which is the uh, what's this the dark umber or sorry burnt umber So I can see that the tip of the nose is a bit darker. So 
So I'm gonna put some dark shadow right here and under the nostril. Now the first tool that I will use for this particular part of the skin tone is my indenting tool. So you can just buy it online. These are metal, uh, uh, like metal ball, tiny metal ball in on the tip of this indenting tool. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know what exactly is the name of this tool, but uh, I call it indenting tool because I use it uh, particularly here on the nose. You, can you see this white watery highlight in the middle of the nose? They, they have really sharp white uh, pores or details or highlight that um, I think this indenting tool can really really make it look better compared to just erasing because when you erase all those like when you use electric eraser tool for those tiny spots of highlights um tiny because they are really really white and, and eraser may not look as white based on my reference photo and uh, i can use also white pen for those tiny highlights but for me white pen can look a little bit more unnatural looking so i think this will do the the, the indenting tool for those highlighted skin pores so uh, there are different sizes of the ball, the metal ball, on the edge of this indenting tool. So I'm going to use the smaller one, I think. Wait, I will. Yeah, this one. This is not the smallest, uh, but this is a bit small. So I think this will do. So what I do is I just press on where, based on my reference photo, are those uh, dot or uh, those tiny white highlights. So what I do is I'm going to put pressure and press against the paper to indent, to leave... Uh, marks on the paper and those marks will be hopefully will be uh, will serve as the the tiny skin white highlights that should look more natural so because of this indention or in indentation uh, whatever it is because of these marks uh, these marks will prevent the color pencils to enter into it so uh, so all those tiny white highlights will be visible when we layer more colored pencils about it Okay, so I don't need to put too much uh, indentation on the paper just uh, because I can see on my reference there are only some parts where there is a concentration of these tiny dots or I think this is the highlighted skin pores. So you just press a bit harder to make uh, really nice uh, indentation on the paper now I will go back with my uh, dark umber or burnt umber to add more uh, detail Uh, some colored pencil artists use the that indenting tool on the hair or uh, on the what do you call it eyebrows, but uh, you can also use it on skin tone, especially on highlighted uh, part of the skin tone. So you will see the effect of that indenting tool later on because we will be adding more layers above it. This is just basically the base. The this is the uh, the we just block in the darkest shadow on the nose, but we will be adding more layers. So. Uh, and you will see, you will see the indented uh, highlights later on. I apologize about this noise that you hear in the background, the noisy dogs, the busy street. So, uh, because uh, I want to make this video as raw as possible. And at this stage, it looks a little bit creepy, isn't it? What, what do you call that um, phobia on tiny dots? But this is just the first layer so uh, uh, there's not so much going on here I'm just trying to based on my reference photo I'm just trying to perfect all these tiny details of the skin and we are going to layer many colors above this base detail base later on so let's just put some tiny uh, adjustment and uh, more details before we go on with our uh, second pencil a second color Okay, now I'm ready for my second layer. This is the Burnt Sienna. So I'm gonna use it to tone the details first before I lightly cover with this uh, pencil all the shadows. So I start again 
by putting this very quickly, just very quickly, uh, tone all these tiny visible details with this pencil. Just to make them look more natural. Because as you can see on the reference photo, it's a, it's a bit reddish, the skin tone of the nose. So we want to tone even the tiny details a little bit to make them a little bit reddish with this burnt sienna. If you're wondering what is this wooden ruler doing here, um, this is just to protect the paper from my sweaty hands. So I just rest my hand above it um, just to make sure that I don't ruin the paper. Okay, so we continue using this uh, burnt sienna to tone the details. Okay, you, you can just be quick because you already know where those details are. So we just um, try to tone all these tiny details. Okay, so I'm just doing it really, really quickly. We don't want to waste too much time here because uh, we still have a couple of layers to put. Now we are almost done in uh, trying to tone some of the details. I think we need to uh, put some layers of this color, the burnt sienna, above the freckles tiny freckles like on this part and over here I keep my pencil really sharp to be able to make it a bit easier to blend later on because when you uh, don't keep your pencil sharp there is a tendency that the layers will be coarse and harder to blend Now I'm doing tiny circles and I'm doing it with very very light pressure. I sharpen my burnt sienna because I'm gonna layer on the majority of the skin tone with this burnt sienna, very very light layer of this color because we don't want to erase all the details that we put in. And we just want to tone the rest of the skin tone with this burnt sienna especially with the con uh, concentration on the shadowed areas like here on the edge of the left side of the nose and under the nostrils or nostril because the other nostril is hidden and right here there, there is a nice dark shadow over here so very very lightly i'm just gonna tone this uh, shadow to make it a little bit more reddish because on first layer we put like a dark brown or a dark umber so with this color which is a bit reddish we want to make it uh, a little bit more uh, natural so gradually you should see the indented uh, details that we put using the indenting tool Believe it or not, but I need to use this cobalt turquoise color on some part of the skin. Like here on the edge of the nose. Very, very lightly. You don't want to overuse it. And here on the tip of the nose. Extend it a little bit here. And over the nostril. And on the shadow here on the right side. And just a very very light touch over here on this shadow. On the right side of the nose. Can barely see it because I just want it to be really really light. I just want it to have correct tone. But I think this is optional if you don't have this color. You can just use light green. Anyway I will be using green later on. 
I just feel like I needed to put this blue right here on some part or some shadowed part. So this is the toning stage and I call these two pencils as my toners. So this is the dark Naples ochre and this is the light green. So basically I just want to layer them very very lightly on the entire uh, part or the nose part. Um, even on the highlighted parts I just want to uh, just layer them. So I'm going to start with my dark Naples ochre. So I just do it in circular motion. The pressure should be very very light. You just want to fill in the tooth of the paper with this very light uh, pencils, my toners. So this is the toning stage. Just to set the yellowish uh, greenish undertone. Although we already have put uh, details, uh, we want to uh, make sure that okay, we want to make sure that the tone of the skin tone is really full and complete. Because we will be layering uh, some more reddish color after this. But for now, we would, we would just want to ensure that we are getting the light tone. Because I, I, if you can see in my reference photo, so this is a bit reddish, but with really nice touch of yellow and light green. So we just layer them even above the, all those details that we put a while ago. And uh, because I use very light pressure in circular motion, uh, it doesn't uh, affect very much the details. So basically, we are toning the shadows here with a touch of light yellow or this yellow ochre. So again, we are here at the toning stage. We tone the entire um, nose with this color. And then our light green, just the same. We want to put it and layer it really, really lightly with almost no pressure at all just to um, tone the skin I think this green can be used in any type of skin tone if you want to make it um, uh, look very nice in terms of the saturation because they seem to uh, tone down bright colors so if we put some reddish deep colors um, because we already put this before that, uh, the saturation of the skin will become more beautiful and uh, perfectly saturated, not too bright. At this stage, I want to blend very, very lightly using this small blending stump. So what I do is I just cut the stump to have a clean uh, tip. And then I just want to soften the edge of the blending stump. And then using circular motion with light pressure. Although a uh, blending stump uh, blends really, really lightly. So it doesn't damage or it doesn't erase the details of the skin tone. We just want to soften uh, the skin tone using the blending stump. Again, I'm using very, very light pressure. After this, we are going to layer more bright colors. And uh, that's going to be the final layers. First, I want to establish my dark shadows using this raw amber before we use uh, the brighter colors. So basically, the dark shadows are here on this part. Just on the edges of the nose. So we are not burnishing because we are not putting pressure. Um, Oil-based uh, colored pencils such as polychromos um, basically does not uh, need to uh, burnish because it's a bit like I think it's self blending already if you use it apply it with uh, lesser pressure it just blends so easily So 
So this is the Pompeian red. So this is the first brighter color that we will use to make the skin tone blush a little bit. As you can see on my reference photo, it's a bit reddish. But because of the previous layers that we put, everything will just come together to create a perfectly, hopefully to create perfectly saturated skin tone. I just do some concentration on the uh, skin details or the tiny specks or dots here to make them a little bit uh, brighter and reddish. So the big uh, skin uh, pigments here should be visible towards the end. So I want to make them I want to make them a little bit more reddish. So if you there are different styles in colored pencil uh, drawing especially on skin tone. So this is just one of the things that you might want to try. This is very effective if you are trying to create realism. But you must be willing to have more patience and to spend um, a little bit more time and effort. But I know it will be really, really worth it. On this side, the right side, this shadow right here, uh, the details are not that uh, very visible. So we just go ahead and uh, layer this Pompeian red above these details. Compared to the details on this part, uh, the details here are not very visible so but they are still there we want to concentrate here on the shadow right here make it a little bit uh, reddish and here again I'm going from dark to light as you can see I started with dark brown light brown and uh, now the more saturated uh, colors the reddish tones this is again this is the Pompeian red but you can use any other uh, red uh, just choose pale reds not the bright reds they are not bright reds are not very good in skin tone they will not look natural what I love about oil based colored pencils particularly this one the, the Faber Castell Polychromos is that it seems that the more layers you put in the paper the more the skin tone becomes really nice sac nicely saturated and smooth so I think it really depends also on the colored pencils because what I'm using right now the Faber Castell Polychromos is the most high-end oil based uh, colored pencil you really need to take advantage of the highest quality of pigment and the highest quality the blendability of this pencil and the ability to create a highly uh, realistic and detailed skin tone it's really really very much capable of uh, because some colored pencils even prismacolor the wax based colored pencils um do not achieve this kind of uh, highly detailed artworks you just have to be very much willing to spend uh, some effort some time in order to achieve it but the, the pencil itself is really really nice and uh, it provides the kind of quality pigmentation that you want that you needed so uh, whatever reference photo HD reference photo it's, it's really really great for those kind of detailed artworks the next pencil that I will use is the cadmium orange okay so I just do use it very very lightly because I don't want to be uh, too bright so I just want to make sure that the parts where um, uh, highly saturated L like on this part even on the highlighted area here I put some colored pencil very very lightly because you want to make it seamless the transition between the highlight and the shadow Can you see those indented details that we put a while ago? It's gradually showing through and I'm happy about it. So now I'm using this Rose Carmine to give really nice blush. 
on the skin tone and even on the details so just very quickly um add this uh, rose carmine on top of some of the freckles to make them um become a little bit more reddish and pinkish and natural looking and then for the rest of the skin tone i just again with uh, using very very sharp point in circular tiny circular motion i just want to blush the rest of the skin tone I hope you can forgive my dogs. Very, very noisy. I should go lighter and lighter with the shade that uh, I'm putting. Uh, the as the pencil becomes lighter, it becomes a little bit more like blender. So you are shading, you are toning with pinkish tones but also they somehow serve as blender also so gradually we, we are able to cover the tooth of the paper with this really nice oil uh, oil based pigments of this polychromos Now we are on the final blending stage. So what I, I uh, chose to be my blender pencil is this. This is the dark flesh. So this is what I use to blend uh, the darker shadows. Because if I use white to blend them, they have the tendency to fade. So I don't want all these shadows to fade. So uh, this is what I use the dark flesh. So I can uh, now I can add a little bit more pressure just to blend all the layers of colors that we put and uh, because we were able to establish the details so even if we are here pushing a little bit uh, uh, to, to, to blend the layers of colors the details are already there so it will not remove or it will not erase those details so this pencil the dark flesh is what I use to uh, further hide the tooth of the paper because you don't want the tooth of the paper to show through but I don't want to burnish I don't want to put heavy pressure because I'm using oil based colored pencil so um, if I use wax based such as Prismacolor uh, I may do the burnishing but here um, actually it doesn't need uh, burnishing this pencil so if you need to make it a little bit more smoother, you can just apply uh, medium pressure. Can you see how uh, with this dark flesh, all the layers that we put are coming together and become really nice one uh, smooth saturated uh, detailed skin tone. So if you are a colored pencil artist but you have not yet tried uh, to use this pencil, this uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, I really really highly recommend that you get one. Um, you, it's quite pricey but uh, you know, if you, it's, it's really worth the price, this uh, colored pencil. Now it's time for our white. I use it to blend a little bit and uh, if there are some parts that I need to be lighter like here I can just use the white in between the details and uh, it makes the details pop a little bit if you go around them with the white and at the same time it blends really really nicely the skin tone so it's, it's a little bit lighter on this part and on this highlight um, as you can see the indented uh, highlights are here already but we want to use the white to just to make it even more lighter
even here I can see that the skin tone here is a bit lighter so I use the white to blend this part and also here and here and we just uh, blend very lightly with the white the rest of the skin tone here and here because these parts need to be a little lighter compared to the rest of the skin tone Finally, we are going to do some erasing to pull off some of the highlights. So I'm using this Mono Zero Eraser. You, you must have this if you are uh, a colored pencil uh, artist. This is very nice. If you want to make some parts a little bit lighter, you can just erase. And also, if you want to uh, pull off some details, And for tiny details, I just use my electric eraser. So um, as you can see, the one that we indented uh, in the beginning, those are the brighter highlights. But uh, when we erase using electric eraser, we can pull off some not so bright highlights. Like here on the highlighted uh, watery part here in the middle of the nose. I should go back with my Pompeian Red to do my final adjustment and some final touches. So the combination of colors that I chose de all depends on my reference photo. So uh, it may not necessarily be the same set of pencils that you will use uh, when you try this on your drawing. Um, it doesn't matter if uh, uh, the, the shade that you have is different from this because what's important is you focus on your shadows, your highlights, and the details of the skin tone. If you have any question about this uh, video, and uh, I, I am uh, uh, very much encouraging you to comment to put your comment anything that you need to say about this video on my comment section thank you so much for joining me for this uh, real-time colored pencil drawing video focusing on realistic detailed skin tone i hope you enjoy it somehow if, even if this video is really really long and um thank you for for uh, allowing me to share with you uh, some things that uh, i know about uh, colored pencil about skin tone about blending about layering so uh, there will be a lot more uh, videos like this different technique and style using colored pencils uh, in, the, in the near future so i hope you um, subscribe to my channel and i hope you uh, continue watching my video and uh, if you are a beginner just keep practicing just keep improving i know you can make it thank you so much this is bmd portrait see you next time bye bye